So here we have with us today, Kathy Paperno, Esquire partner uh, with um, Echo Sparks in Media, Pennsylvania. Um, she's also the author of the book, Fearless in Heels, which just made its debut and has been popular all, all around Pennsylvania and hopefully will be used in many schools um, to educate people. Your superpower is in protecting people from domestic violence, men and women, and domestic violence can be described as physical or emotional. So uh, my, my question to kind of get to know you a little bit better is what about your career inspires you the most? Well, it found me. The law found me. I never anticipated going to law school, practicing law, or being a family law attorney or domestic violence advocate. But having survived it myself 30 years ago in college, and keeping it a secret for all of those years, it finally came out in 2021. So for all of those years, I did not tell my clients in the courtroom that I had actually been through it as well. Never, never spoke of it. And it wasn't that they needed to know because in the courtroom, I'm the advocate and outside the courtroom, I'm the survivor. So I, that is what motivates me, but it's not that we have them every day. It's some, part of a divorce case generally, or a custody case, or a criminal case. I have a background as a public defender as well. So everything crosses over when you're in the midst of a divorce or a custody battle. And I find I am able to understand it and have the victim tell me the whole story. And that's when she gets her power back. So that's what I teach them how to get their power back and either keep it out of court for purposes of the family part of it or in the court for purposes of protecting them. That is amazing. I think the fact that you have the compassion because you've been through it and the empathy because you've been through it, I find it fascinating that you used that as fire in your belly probably every time you were in the courtroom uh, as fuel um, for, for whoever you were helping defend uh, in that situation. Right, and you deny and deflect, which I did for all of those years, raising my son, being married, uh, moving up the ladder uh, through law firms, finally landing the job of equality for a woman. But yes, in that courtroom, whether I wanna remain calm or not, I, ca I cannot. Yeah. You know, the passion has to come through, whether it's, you know, arguing with my opponent or enlightening a judge or putting him, and we say him because generally those are the cases that you see in protection from abuse court, let him know we're not afraid. Yeah. And you have to fight back. Yeah. In the courtroom. I think it's wonderful when passion meets mission, right? And when you're mission driven, it's much more about you can't help but do what is coming up for you, what's bubbling up as purpose. Um, as you know, the freckled strawberry is on a mission is dedicated to empowering women in financial independence, probably coming and stemming inside of me the same things that you have spoken about as your mission and passion that's driven you, um, the fire in your belly that's helped you help other people um, is really why I went into to the freckled strawberry. Been in financial services a long time, so what I have found in my own experiences is that when you don't understand and have clarity around financial instruments, people can take advantage of you. You could make decisions that you wouldn't necessarily have made had you known better. So I am on a mission to educate as many women as they can, not just about making the salary or making the grade or you know, having enough in your savings account, but really generating some opportunity for themselves and wealth. So money, marriage, and divorce, right? right? Preparing for the conversation. Um, a lot of women don't think about the money piece before they get married, um, but it's important. Maybe you're young and you don't have a lot squirreled away yet. Maybe you're mid-flight and you need to have that conversation. But I imagine that preparing for this conversation in finance and discovery is probably the same. If it's prenuptial, somewhere in between or whatever. Um, but what are some of the 
observations you have when it comes to financial conversations with women that are entering into either an agreement for prenuptial in the middle of divorce? Yeah, I have to say that it's far different than when I first started. Um, women are more um, responsible and eager to know the truth versus being the dependent spouse. We do have dependent spouses and sometimes it's the man. But for her, when she comes to see me, we have to start, if, it's, if there's children involved, we have to start with custody first to determine what's next because that affects support. And is she able to um, stay in the house or does she have to refinance? And those are the three big ones that we work around. Every case is different. So I tell them, we have to know your plan. What is your plan so I know how to get you there? And while she's with me, or he sometimes, will run the support guidelines to determine how much money she will live on, or if it's him, how much money he's going to owe, to see sometimes they make their decision on a separation or a divorce based on finances. Mm -hmm. Or you know the woman never wanting to give up custody because she can't stand having her children away overnight. So, uh, un shockingly, they don't come to an appointment with their documents. So they're sort of, you know, guessing or recalling how much is the mortgage. He has a pension. There's a 401k. So once we determine, is it going to be a primary custody issue for for her, or is it 50/50 custody that affects support? and then ultimately equitable distribution at the end of the case. So I always prepare a chart towards the end of the case because it takes time. So like you say, we have to gather the discovery from both parties so we can compare what each one has and then determine what the percentage distribution will be. And I find lately within the last 10 years, they're getting it, they understand, and it's easier to look at it in, on paper and then determine what she's going to do. Can she afford the house or does it have to be sold? Thereafter, does she have to move into something smaller like a condo? The school district affects it. So everything, if, every item in every case, of every stage I should say, custody, support, divorce affects the other. Everything affects the other. And they're getting that and they're understanding it and participating in the plan. Once the discovery is right in front of them, they see the picture and they start making decisions from there. So we, I haven't had one really where someone says, I don't I have no idea what the mortgage is or he does all the banking. I don't know. Lately, it's the women who do all the banking mm. and they do know what's there. So they have grown it leaps and bounds in my 25 year career. That's great to hear. Yeah. So I'm going to say it again. You said custody, support, divorce. Right. So the process, custody, support, divorce. That's the thought process. Let's enter emotions. Let's put emotions into this. So I have found some women are afraid to call an attorney until, because they don't know what to expect on the other end of that call. Right. I'm considering divorce. I'm not happy. This is not working for me. Or I'm getting married. I have a lot of money. I have a couple houses. I don't want my, should something go wrong, I don't want this person to take the things I have. Right. So they're apprehensive about calling, um, whether it's money or not understanding how billing works or whatever. So how can a woman prepare herself? You mentioned it a little bit, mm -hmm. the process of having that financial discussion. You said, surprisingly, nobody brings all of their information at first, right? right? right. None of it. Yeah. So when I have the first consultation, it's usually an hour. Sometimes it goes further because it, they, they view it as a therapeutic process anyway, mm -hmm. by telling you the history of it first, then going into the children. So I have a divorce questionnaire that I send with them so they, they know exactly what to attach to the questionnaire, 401k statements, tax returns, pay stubs, real estate taxes, and then it all comes back to me when we're moving forward. The first, but the actual consultation is too emotional for 99.9%, .9 whether it's a man or a woman. Yeah. They're not coming in with a piece of paper. They're not using my pen and piece of paper. They're listening. And hopefully they leave with all of the information, but once they get the questionnaire, they understand what we're looking for. So I do always have to start with, well, date of marriage. And you know, I just had someone call the other day with a 44 year marriage. So you don't see them very often. 
Um, and then we move into, well, who are their children? And it goes a completely different way. If there are no children, then we don't have to start with custody. Well, where are they? Is there an agreement? Who's, have you left the home? And if you left the home, did you take the children? If he left the home, do you have the children? Because it goes right into the custody piece of, do you have a custody order? Make sure you have a schedule. And more and more in Pennsylvania, it's shared physical custody, 50-50, uh, week on, week off, or a two, two, three, uh, every other week. And that's based on work schedules too. Sometimes I have nurses who work three 12 hour shifts and they don't have a choice. The child has to go with the other parent um, or police officers who have such complicated schedules to figure out. You have to work around the work schedule. Then you have to work around their emotion mm -hmm. and hope that they still communicate because by the time you get to the holiday schedule and they're not talking, then it's up to the attorneys to figure that out. So that's the, to me, that's step one. Then I know where to go from there. And if she says, I don't know if I should leave, then I run the support guidelines to show what she's gonna live on. That, and that's it. And if you're very young and you're not working because you have small children, then you're splitting his salary. If you both have jobs, then we know what we're gonna be adding to your salary. Do you have sufficient funds for private school? Can you qualify to refinance the mortgage if you want the house? Because that's the school district and that's where their friends are. So the emotion crosses in on the custody piece that then gets you to the support piece where he or she decides, you know what, I really need to go to counseling instead of getting a divorce or no, it's definitely over. I need to move, but I don't know what I can afford. And then we spread into how to, if they're going to move forward, is it going to be a property settlement where we can do it amicably or are we going to court? And then I give them the advice as to what our hearing officers do based upon the circumstance of custody and income. So much to consider. I think that's what a lot of women were telling me. Um, there's a lot of berries out there. And there's a couple of different influences in my research that I have found <clears throat> that influence a woman's relationship with money and her responses to situations like this. You mentioned the emotion and then we're able to kind of calm down and then we can be analytical and we can think through. The reptilian brain is, a, is, a, is that fight or flight, it's reaction, it's survival. It makes sense that a woman would come in and just wanna listen and kind of gather her thoughts and understand her space. Um, I just find it fascinating that you're able to then switch gears with them so that they can be in an analytical space and, and think clearly. If they're moving into a post-divorce situation, um, can you just share with me uh, quickly what you think common things that come up after a divorce? You know, we've, we've, we've made the call, we've worked through the custody, we've worked through the support, we're divorced. Is it going to be smooth sailing from there? Um, generally, well, yes, hopefully, but there's always an issue because you have a duty to report whether you're making more income. So if she finds out you, you have a raise or you moved in with your girlfriend and you bought a bigger house and a better car, then you come back in to modify for an increase. If he is making less money, for example, COVID changed a lot for a lot of people who weren't working, that was a big issue for modification to come back into court to lower the court order. So you do, upon decree, have your property settlement agreement, which I tell everyone, this will govern the rest of your life. So this will not be modified. Make sure you understand mm -hmm. it, take your time, and I'll review it at least five times. Yeah. And it'll go back and forth between the lawyers or the parties themselves to determine what makes sense and what they need. And that part of it becomes, say you're you know, the dependent spouse and you need to buy a house, you don't wanna wait for his pension. Right. If he's only 40, right. you're never gonna get that money. You need more cash out of the refinance in the house to go and move into the condo so that you can move forward with your life and then the pension will come when you need it. So those are the things that happen that we certainly have to address because the pension is part of equitable distribution, the 401k. We want the 401k check to be a rollover into an IRA for her, a non-taxable event. She's never worked. She's a dependent spouse, so she has that cushion. While she's then getting on her feet with alimony, hopefully, mm -hmm. based upon need, 
you know, it's not a computation in Pennsylvania. We don't have anything to go by other than, is she going to need health insurance because she's going to be removed from his? Is she going to be paying rent or a mortgage? And then our hearing officers in my county will review those things to determine what she needs to then get back on her feet and, you know, be independent raising the children. So those are the issues that are forewarned in the property settlement agreement and the negotiations. If you're talking about the post, the uh, prenuptial agreement, that's another thing that many times is, is people regret. Yeah. They, you know, they gave up spousal support or APL or alimony or real estate, not realizing it would have come to this bitter end mm -hmm. and they're sorry for what they gave up, but that's unfortunate. And there's generally nothing we can do about that unless we can reach an agreement or it was done under duress and we can uh, take it to court to try to modify. But the finances are different for every single client and so are the decisions. That's what I'm getting from all this and, and the freckled strawberry in its mission to empower women towards financial independence. Independence is defined in a few different ways um, for many people. But really, it's about having knowledge and understanding into what you're moving into. And it's not static, is what I'm learning, right, from this conversation in divorce, prenuptial, during marriage, something's growing, festering, postnuptial, there could be, there could be issues. So it is important uh, to understand money. I'm glad to hear that there's better understanding okay. walking in the door. That makes me very happy. Right. And we're going to continue to do that. Kathy, thank you so much for being with us today at the Freckled mm -hmm. Strawberry and sharing all of your knowledge. Um, in the spirit of the Freckled Strawberry sorority, what advice would you give a woman at this very moment about getting ready for marriage or contemplating divorce? Uh, well, you have to be confident and know what you want. Do not listen to the third parties who are not attorneys. That means your friends, your family, someone else who went through it, especially because you don't know what county, you don't know which judge, you don't know exact the incomes. So don't listen to the third parties who are trying to feed that information. But if you are believing you're ready to move out or move forward, then gather the documents from the house, copy everything, because if it gets bitter, you're going to have to wait to pay to get through the discovery process to do that. So I, I would say there are decisions, and I'm not saying everyone has to go to an attorney, but you can certainly do mediation. There are divorce coaches out there who somehow, you know, get, do the case at run the case while I'm running the case. And that conflicts a lot too. But I would say you have to do not surrender your control to the system. Don't. You're smart Good enough. Advice. Never do surrender. Not surrender your control to the system. Never. I heard that. And take your power back. Yeah. Take your power back from whatever went wrong in the marriage. Don't let a third party make your decisions for you. You have to trust your attorney and certainly you can switch if it's not working or if it's not the right, that's not the right personality for you. Yeah. But if I start out with a contentious uh, divorce and suddenly they're talking and they're trying to settle, then I'm writing a property settlement agreement. We need to stay out of court. Yeah, yeah, that's great to know. Yeah. So how is Kathy Paperno going to define success in 2023? Well, for 2023, I mean... Fearless in Heels is now on the library shelf at Widener University after just speaking there. So I'm trying to change. I, I'm hoping to be the new face of domestic violence Great. because people don't really understand all that. But and to teach the college students, law students, any young person coming um, of age what it means. And I'm thrilled to see the young including my son who's 22, college graduates who treat each other equally. Yeah. You're always equal. Yeah. And I don't think you had it. I didn't yeah. have it. A lot so, of gratitude for that. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of roadblocks that we had to overcome. But, you know, there were trail, trailblazers blazers before us. And we are. And they're they're going to be behind us. They're going to be behind yeah. us. So for me, I mean, I come from an immigrant family from Italy where my father had to learn English to no one going to college and certainly not law school. So I've already, in my opinion, reached my success, but becoming an equal partner at the law firm 
and then writing my sequel to uh, Fearless. It's going to be Fearless in Heels, Picking Up the Pieces, which is my life and all my clients. Oh, that's great. In the sequel. So fortunately, Pearls yeah. of wisdom in that book, I'm sure. Yes, I hope so. People yeah. have learned and things have changed for them too. But at my age now, it's like I don't want to fight much more for myself. I deserve it and I know my worth now. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank all you right. for having me.